to send this result to Revit, uh, we'll bake the geometry into Rhino layers, and in Dynamo, we'll use Rhino plugin by Nadan Miller, and so that we can send the geometry to Revit. Okay. For now, we'll go back to Rhino, and we'll create Rhino layers. So for the one, we will make code. The next one, we'll make post and the last one will make it to web and the other layers I'll just delete it and I'll make default to work layer in this case okay once you change the layer name now let's bake our grasshopper geometry mm, for now we have web uh, sorry code we bake it to code layer and I'm going to bake our post to the post layer and I'm going to bake our webs in the web layer and the other webs in the web layer. Okay, once you finish, let's close our grasshopper. And you can see this geometry will send it to Revit. Okay, now let's save our grasshopper file. I'm ah, sorry, Rhino file. And now I'm going to open Revit. Let's click on new and structural template project and as you know in grasshopper with caramba we find out the result uh, the members here based on this calculation result and I'm going to go mo our model view on the structural tag I'm go going to enable our cross-section names and let's turn off our beam view so as you can see, we have three cross sections for each member. So R, H, S, H, 200 by 104 for top and bottom codes. And we have C, H, S, H, 114 by 3 for the posts. And we have 88.9 by 6.3 for the web elements. In Revit, we go extensions and we can set our preference from US standard to UK standard and I'm going to generate those members in Revit so we need to have British standard RHSH um, the name was 200 by 100 4 go here let's find out 200 by 100 by 4 and then we, ha we need CHSH HSH, okay, and we need to have 88.9.6.3. Go to Revit. 80 will be in the bottom here. 88.9 by 6.3. Here we go. And we need 114.3 by 3. I believe. Yep, that's correct. So we create those members in this Revit environment. So in the structural framing, as you can see, we have now CHS. So I'll delete those on the members we don't need from the list. Universal Beam will delete it. So we have CHS and CHSH for the member. Now in Grass of uh, in Revit, we'll go on the add-in and we'll turn on Dynamo to transfer the data to Dynamo and I'm going to click new and now we are in Dynamo environment and before we proceed the workflow we'll have to download download Dynamo by Nadan Miller plugin in Dynamo to download your plugin we have to go package manager so I'm going to click on package and I'll search for package in this case. Here let's type Rhinamo and when you find Rhinamo, you can install by clicking on this arrow here. In this case I already installed uh, Rhinamo so I'll just simply start to bring our Rhino model to, to Dynamo. So to be start with we'll type file pass and let's pl put on here and I'll find out our Rhino file which we saved from here with different layers and let's 
hit open. Now we specify our file path. When you hit mouse right button in Dynamo, you can search uh, the other component. In this case, I'll type file from path component. So we'll this is our file path, and I'll convert to actual file in Dynamo. And I make it to manual for now instead of automatic. When you convert to manual, we can uh, run the script. If you make it automatic, it this script is always running automatically, but sometimes it takes memory of your computer. So now I'm going to search open Rhino object, Rhino 3D model, 3D model command from Rhinamo, or you go on the browser, Rhinamo, we read Rhino file, so open, open 3D model, get Rhino file, I'm gonna connect this, and I'm going to run my uh, script, then you'll see we brought Rhino model, and also name of the file, and the, the size of the file, and saving time, and created by who and all the information you can get in here. Now what we'll do, we'll get Rhino object layers. So Rhino object and get documents object. I'm going to connect my model to here to see hit the run command and we see the layers in this case. And zero list will be attribute, second list it will be hatch the third list will be layers which we have in our Rhino file which is correct we'll get the Rhino layer names okay not this one from the Rhino model Rhino model we get Rhino layers hit run then we'll only get Rhino name and we'll get the key numbers 0, 1, 2, 3 which is similar to Grasshopper but I'm we're going to list item is specify one item or multiple item from the list. In Dynamo we have similar component called list get item at index. And I'm going to connect this list and I'm going to I'm going to select one to three those three respectively respectively. So I'm going to double click and I'm going to use design script in Dynamo and say first three of index, second index, and third index I want to get. And I'm going to copy and paste for each list get item index node. And I'm going to co provide my index that I want to extract from the list 1, 2, 3 to each index number here. Then I'm going to run the script. And as you can see, we'll get code and post and web layers in each. And the next thing we have to do is Rhino ob object get by layer, and I'm going to connect Rhino model which we have here, and I'm going to connect my layer, and I'm going to connect these two more, and I'm going I'm going to provide each layer to the the next step. And after that, what I'll do will convert those line to Rhino geometry to design script geometry because Dynamo is based on design script geometry to Rhino. So I'm going to go read Rhino Rhino line to DS. Okay, this is probably correct. So because we have in Rhino file, we have these baked lines or you can use curves but I'm going to use line, line command here and I'm going to provide line object to DS script. I'm going to copy and paste two more and I'm going to provide them in each here. Okay. Now let's get the uh, run our script. Then in Dynamo background we have this uh, geometry which we get got from Rhino file. Okay. To go to to control your background in in Dynamo, you can control hold your control key and press B button as a background, and you can use similar to Rhino uh, 3D viewport. Okay, and you can control B again back to your node, or you can click on this icon on the top uh, bottom right corner. 
now I'm going to apply each line to cross section we just generated in Revit. Remember, we generate those uh, members from content library. So I'm going to create, in this case, I'm going to in here, structural framing. So in here, we'll convert uh, this line to beam. Um, instead of curry, we'll actually create them. So I'm going to create actual beam and web error user as a bracing component. Okay. So let's use this as a code, top code and bottom code. And I'm going to provide the level, hit levels. And I'm going to provide them to level 1 in Revit environment. Okay, then the structural type will be, let's say, structural, structural framing type. We'll say beam type, structural framing types. And I'm going to have top code, which is 200 by 104. And I'm going to connect this next one, which is our post components. I'm going to share the same level, but Post components, sorry, will only be brace component. I'm going to use web as a bracing component, but we'll still share the same level in Revit. And in this case, second one will use this post with a framing component, and we'll share the level in same level environment in Revit. And but I'll specify different <laughs> cross section for post. So I'm going to make CHS 143.3.3 and another one here we have bracing which is web of the truss structure I'm going to make it thinner, uh, smaller cross section I'm going to provide in here once I run the script then Revit will generate these um, these uh, geometry in Revit environment so let's hit run to generate oh I'm sorry because Revit follow the the Rhino units so in this case we better to have actually Revit also as a meter unit and I'm going to give two this this thermal value and I'm going to run my script script again and as you can see we couldn't get top code geometry in this case Let's see the error. Spell could be too small for Revit. And uh, sometimes it, this geometry doesn't work. Then we need to explode geometry to be sure to have. We we'll run the script again to have all separate uh, list. Okay, and I'm going to connect this one to the curve line again, and I'm going to run my script. And now Revit generated all those cross sections based on Karamba result. But as you can see, our line loca uh, the location of the beam is not center. On the other hand, our Karamba model has all the cross sections has the center line as a reference. So to match this result in Revit, we have to select them or select by entire project and we have to specify um, center to the center so that we can have same um, beam location lines I'll make them again to entire project and then again I'll make this um, origin to center and the YZ value also make it to center in this case and again, I'll make all these posts also to center of the geometry. Then we'll have exactly the same result as a Karamba root Karamba uh, model. Okay. And later on, we can also send this result, uh, these beams to um, robot structural analysis or or uh, RS, RFEM or other third-party uh, calculation software. Okay. Thank you very much.